I think there's a fine balance that separates good visual techniques from others. And overuse of a technique is often enough to tip that balance. Here you're viewing a technique that when we use it sparingly, it just about sits on the right side of that line, in my opinion, of course. With an image like this opened up into Photoshop, we need to make a selection of the droplets that we want to move. We need to copy them to a new layer. Then we need to clone them out from the original layer because if a drip moved, you don't expect to see the drip still sitting in that location. Let's start by zooming in to this droplet here and I'll copy from that one. Now we can go to the bottom of the toolbox and select the zoom, but Z is the shortcut key, so click and drag. We'll get the image large and I'll use the space bar, click and drag to move it around. I think what I'll do here is to select the this one here, I think. I'm going to go to the quick selection tool. I think that's going to be reasonably quick and easy here. You can see I've got a fairly small brush. So I'm just going to paint around this area. And when I release, you can see it's done a fairly good job, certainly good enough for what we want here. So before I move on any further, I think I'll hit Control zero to fit the image on screen. Now you can only just about see that little marching ants around the droplet. I'm gonna to go to select and mask at the top of the screen. And I'm going to put a one pixel feather into the edge. Sometimes I think we may want to stretch that to two. Let's risk two pixels and click OK. Now it's a simple method of Control J that will copy that droplet to a new layer. There we can see it. And if I turn off the base layer, there you can see the droplet we have to play with. Now what we need to do is to turn off the droplet we've just copied, reselect the background layer, because we need to remove this. It's possible for us to move it into this area here, but we won't get that opportunity in all cases. So I'm gonna use shortcut keys, control spacebar to just zoom in a little bit, because I'm gonna select my spot healing brush. I'm going to make a brush that more or less just covers that, give it a touch. And I think if I make the brush a little smaller and I make a few more touches around here, you can see that we can merge that in, certainly good enough for the technique we're going to demonstrate here. That's all there is to it. There's the droplet. Now let me just move that droplet. I'm gonna pick up my move tool, use my cursor control keys, there you can see the droplet. We're gonna have that just dropping down in PTE AV Studio. All we need to do now is to turn off that layer one, select background and save that as a JPEG into the project folder we're working on. Then we need to turn off that background layer, select and turn on layer one and save that as a PNG file that will retain the transparent nature of the image. Now with the JPEG we've just saved, opened up into PTE AV Studio and into the objects and animation screen. I'm gonna click into the gray area to lose the bounding box. I'm gonna add an image and the image I'm going to add is the PNG file that contains just the droplet. And there you can see the droplet appear in that top right hand space. I've also just increased the slide duration to 15 seconds to give us a little bit of time to play with. So with the window droplet selected, I'm going to right click the keyframe and clone it. So somewhere around three seconds, I want nothing to happen between this keyframe and this keyframe. But now I'm gonna add another. Right click, clone the keyframe. Between this keyframe and this keyframe, I want the droplet to fall a little bit. So I'm gonna use my cursor in the pan Y box and the up arrow just to push it down a little bit. Remember, we need a little bit of speed applied here. So I'm gonna select the keyframe that starts the animation, go to the pan, add a modifier. 
I think I'll add a slow down because we would expect a, a drip to start fast and maybe come to a slower stop. Let's test this by just putting the cursor there. There we have our droplet done. Now let me take you through the other keyframes I've added here. There's the first three that we created a few moments ago. And incidentally, if you look up at the top right, I've adjusted the speed from slow down to smooth. It does work a little bit better. So from this point to this keyframe, which I've cloned, nothing happens. It's just a period where the droplet stays in that position. Then I've cloned another and the droplet drops a little further down the screen. Another clone keyframe, which just allows the droplet to sit where it is. Two keyframes very close together here because this one takes the droplet off the screen. So let's take a look at this full screen to finish. There's the first movement of the droplet, the pause, and then the second movement, and then it leaves the screen. I'll see you next time.